In this video, we're going to do a site-by-site -site tour of Curry Hammock State Park in the Florida Keys. We'll also be covering some of the other parts of the park, like the day use area, going on a kayak trip, and Curry Hammock is famous for its kite surfing. And we'll finish off with a sneak peek at some of the things we did while we were in the Keys, which will be in our next video. Hi, this is Alice. And I'm Larry. And we're Downsizing Makes Sense. Thanks for coming back and watching another campground tour. This time we're in the Florida Keys at Curry Hammock State Park near Marathon, Florida. Now here we are coming into the park and this is the registration. You're gonna stop here and they're gonna tell you to pull up over here to the side and come back into registration. Make sure you have your vehicle uh, registrations, both your trailer and your, and your car because they're gonna want those numbers. Okay, we're gonna come up here and turn right into the campground area. If we went straight, that would go into the day use area. They're gonna give you a code when you come into registration, a four digit code. You just punch the code in there and that lets you into the gate. It's open 24 hours for campground people. Okay, now we're coming into the campground. You can see on the map here, there's an outside loop and an inside loop. The outside loop was perfect for walking the dogs since there were actually few places that the dogs were allowed. Okay, now on the, starting on the outside loop is campsite number two. And we're gonna keep going on the outside loop here. Some of the campsites are empty and I'll drive right into the campsites with my bike so you can get a better look. But most of them were full as this is a very busy campground. So here is number five. This one was uh, cited as a campground host. I think there were three campground hosts while they, we were there. They actually keep five campground hosts at the park at all times. Three of them are actually in the campground area. Now we're gonna drive right into uh, one of the campsites to give you a, a good idea. Uh, they're all, all gravel and they have uh, 30 and 50 amp power. They have a barbecue and a picnic table. Now they also have a couple of poles to hang up a hammock or a clothesline. But they do not have fire rings or fire pits. Right, so they have a uh, barbecue area instead. There is a uh, fire ring out on the beach that everybody can use. It's actually kind of just behind this campsite right there out on the water. It's a fire ring. It's like a public area fire ring. Now most of the campsites that we're going to go in are going to be bit, are going to be full, so you're not going to get that great a look at them. But I did my best to try to give you a good look at the ones that were vacant. Now the ones along the beach are obviously the ones that are hardly ever left open for long, maybe a day. And we were lucky enough to score one right along the beach. This actually number nine is actually the start of the, the beach ones. And um, as you can see here, we're coming up on the outside lane here. These are the sites that you want. These overlook the water. Now in your campsite, the, the dunes are pretty high. So if you're sitting in a chair right at your campsite, you're not gonna be able to see over the dunes. I actually put a chair up on my picnic table so I could see the water. And I also climbed on top of the uh, Grand Design Solitude we were in to get some of uh, the really sweet sunrise and sunset shots you can get right from your campsite. Now this is the public access to the beach right here, just a walkway in between these two campsites. Now there were several tent campers in there uh, but mostly it was uh, big, big campers, as this is a really hard campsite to get booked. There are some big monsters like this 44 foot uh, fifth wheel, which was right beside our 35 foot solitude. And we had, like Al said, a scored a awesome spot right on the water for 10 days. 10 days, yes. The only problem was those, um, the brush, the greenery is full of stickers. So if you have your pups with you, do not, I repeat, do not let them shove their nose in those bushes because I had to cut half the hair off of Scrappy's face. Yeah, a lot of times we put the dogs out on a line when, just to let them have some time outside and we couldn't do that here at Curry Hammock because she would quickly get full of stickers. And nope. you can see right in the back, there are some kites because as you'll see later, we have a, a, a sneak peek of some kiting. Um, and my husband knows how great curry hammock is for kiting yeah it's an awesome place for kiting and if you're there when it's windy there will be kite surfers in your backyard pretty much all day it's it's an awesome place for kite surfing um 
like I said, the uh, sites are all have a gravel floor and there shouldn't be stickers, but there could be just about stickers anywhere. Now we're getting to the end of the beach, the beach sites, and there's a campground house there. And we're coming around to the uh, north end of the loop right now. And where you see that fence is, that is the day use area. And there's an entrance to the day use area, which is great for walking the dogs in the morning. You can easily walk into the day use area. Now here's the, uh, the uh, dump site, full, full access dump site with water. So you can flush a black tank. And the, the garbage is just down the side from there. Just have a quick little video of me just hooking up to the black tank and, and using the dump area on our way out of the campground. And now we're gonna start off with the inside loop, starting with uh, spot number one. Now in the inside loop is also the uh, facilities, the bathroom and showers, which you'll see here in a second. This was a giant handicap spot um, that was fully paved. Uh, you could probably fit a 90 foot unit in there. And as you can see right behind there is access to the bathrooms and showers. Yes, you have a sidewalk going straight to them. Yeah, you'll see in this inside loop, there'll be several sidewalks that give access to the people on the outside loop, uh, access to a walkway to the bathrooms. And here's uh, site number three, also a really good sized site. A lot of these inside loop sites are pretty good sized. There's one of the walkways that uh, to let the outside loop people have access to the bathrooms and showers. We'll give a little uh, look at um, the facilities, which were in excellent condition. Yes, they were very clean. I was, I was impressed. Now, this is one of the smaller sites, site number 10, um, but we get a good look here inside. Again, there's the two poles that you can hang either a hammock or a clothesline and your water and your power hookups at the back of the site. Now we're going back, as you come out of 10, you can see we're looking back out at the outside loop just to kind of give you some orientation of where we are. Now some of the sites used up every square inch of their area, you know, because they had, uh, you know, large class A and a toad. So it's really hard to get a good view of some of these sites, but we did our best to try to get, uh, give you an idea of what you're gonna get in these sites. And you can see many people brought their own kayaks and canoes because there is great kayaking right there, taking off from the day use area. Now here's the bathroom and uh, facilities. There's an outside shower there and an outside sink for washing dishes for tent campers. Okay, we're coming back around the, getting toward the north end again of the inside loop. These ones are really close to the uh, facilities. Again, there's lots of open area in between some of these sites, like between this site and the next site around the corner. So they leave lots of, lots of area that is unused. Again, another walkway to the uh, bathroom and shower area for the outside loop people. And coming around to the last couple of sites here, uh, somebody just in here with the tent, so you can get a better idea of uh, the kind of size of some of these sites. Uh, there's a wide variety of the length of the sites, but they're all pretty much very similar design. They're all really well marked, and it's obviously really easy to pull in and park into these spots as they're all angled for easy back in. Yeah, none of them were pull through. No pull throughs, yeah. all, all back in sites. And this is the last site, site number 28. Okay, here we are going into uh, the men's uh, shower area. Like I said, the, uh, the bathroom facilities were really, really nice and super clean and well taken care of. Um, since um, they don't have uh, full hookups for sewer, I was actually taking my showers in here because we're here for a week. Um, so I would save uh, my gray water uh, tank area. And um, they were super hot showers, uh, really nice and clean. I felt very comfortable uh, showering in the uh, provided facilities. And here, Alice took a little walk into the ladies' room. And again, it was very clean. And I actually did use the shower in the RV just because I'm, I'm just not comfortable doing it in the public ones. Um, but eventually, I'm sure I'm gonna have to do that but it was very clean and there was nothing wrong with the facilities. That's, that's not why I didn't do it. 
but as you can see, it looks a lot like the, uh, the men's area, but this is the women's. Yeah, after, after 10 days, our gray tank was completely full. Um, so it was nice to be able to have these showers close by so we could save on the gray tank area. Okay, they didn't have laundry facilities, but this is a little clip of the uh, Marathon laundromat, which is about 15 minutes away. Okay, now we're gonna drive into the day use area. And it's got an awesome uh, day use area. On the left over here, you'll see there's actually four long RV spots. Now, you can't park a massive unit in here, but these are actually specifically designed for, for RVs. Yeah, it just, was marked RV. Yeah, just, for, just in the day use area. If you're just coming in to go kite surfing or whatever like, for the day, they do have a spot there for you. Lots of parking in here, but on Saturday and Sunday, believe me, this gets, this gets filled up really quickly because this is an awesome public park and there aren't that many of them in the Keys. Now, as I'm just gonna kind of wheel through here on the side, this is the kayak launching area. Later on, you'll, we'll show a little clip of us going kayaking and this is where you pick up your kayak um, before you go on that trip and it, it enters into that little part of the canal. Of course, it's got an awesome beach. There aren't that many great beaches in the Keys, this is one of the best. It's got some picnic, picnic facilities, which you can rent for the day, and a great area for launching your kites and getting out there on the water. Make sure you follow the kite rules. There's an outside shower there to shower off, and there's this great playground area for the kids. Yes. There was, uh, there was always kids in there all, all the time. There was quite a few kids that were actually in the campground. A lot of families that were camping. I mean, long-term um, camping. I think a couple of the campground hosts were actually families. Now this is the day use uh, bathroom. Just giving you a quick idea. Again, very nice and clean. Uh, no shower, no inside shower in the day use uh, bathroom, but they do have an outside shower for rinsing off after being out in the water all day. Dogs are allowed in the campground and on this trail we found, but no dogs they are not allowed on the beach. One of the fun things we did was take a kayak tour around Little Coral Key. As you can see on this map, kind of just highlighting the route that you take around. You can also go on the other areas of the map. Now, you go to the registration and rent the kayak. I think it was about $25 for, for two hours, and they give you life jackets, paddles, and seats to put in the kayaks. It's all self-serve. My favorite thing is to find local wildlife, like the sequel. There he is. Hey! It's definitely stuff. There's definitely some stuff. Um, There's definitely some stuff. stuff moving jumping right around. Here. There's some big bubbles right here. <laughs> what is that? Well, we brought our GoPro on the trip just to give a little underwater view of the sea floor, and it was covered with these jellyfish. I mean, the entire floor was covered with the jellyfish that you can see here, one that's actually moving. It was really cool. Okay, here's a view from our kayak looking at the campground from the water. Just to give you a good idea of what it looks like from the water. You can see our camper there and the day use area. Now in the day use area is a great place to set up your kite to go kite surfing. Like I said before, Curry Hammock is one of the best kite surfing destinations in the Florida Keys with a nice big beach for launching your kite and, and a nice, safe, shallow area to, to ride. So whether you're just learning or an experienced kiter, Curry Hammock is just a fun place to go ride. Now, while I was out on the water, Alice was hanging out in this awesome little spot on the beach, which is right in front of the, our campsite. It was very convenient for her to hang out, watch me ride, take some video, and be able to get back to the camper quickly. Now, just a quick uh, spot here on the internet speed was really fast we were there. Good download and upload speed the whole time. Okay, here we are just sitting at our campsite looking at the sunrise. We had this view every morning of this beautiful sunrise. I made sure I got up to see it. It was awesome. Now we also have the sunset. So you get sunrise and sunset from Curry Hammock. It was awesome. And we were also lucky enough to see an awesome moonrise. And now for a sneak peek of our upcoming What to Do in the Keys video. The Dolphin Research Center welcomes dogs. The dolphins love the dogs. The Turtle Hospital, you cannot bring your dogs, but it's still well worth it. Robbie's Feed the Famous Tarpon, bring the dogs. We actually got free fish because we 
Ouch, brought the dogs, and Key West. Thank you very much for watching this campground review of Curry Hammock State Park in the Keys. We hope this helps you pick your new favorite spot, so hit that thumbs up. Our next video will be about some of our favorite things to do outside the campground while in the Keys. Subscribe and get notified so you won't miss out. Please leave a comment or feel free to ask questions. Just remember, downsizing does make sense.